Are you with the August? I don't know what's going on. 2023, Abby, you're in the studio with me, Andy, and Natasha. We have the lovely Kyle Trueblood yes. and our very special guest, Miss Tanya Memmi. Masters here in Studio Place. Um, there's so much I have to read about you. You you are like you were Miss Canada. I was. You were Miss that Canada. That was a long time ago. Um, it's still Miss Canada. Once a Miss Canada, I think you're always, <laughs> always a Miss a Canada, Miss Canada, Canada, right? Okay. Um, uh, you're you're most known um, for the television show Sell This House on the A and E Network. Yeah. Which aired from 2003 to 2011. Mm -hmm. um, you are the co-creator of Extreme Homes and was a cast member on Hallmark's Home and Family Show. And most recently, as we brought up, Life Masters, which you're filming here. And I then, am, yeah. um, We're just happy to have you on our show. Yes, we are. I'm happy to be here, finally. Yeah, yeah finally. <laughs> I think we, uh, we, we had the AI do, some little, do a little research on you. Oh, you did not. A little you deep did. dive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, a little deep dive on you. I can you. only imagine what it said. Yeah. Well, uh, so, you, you ready for some of these? Yeah, can we? I, uh, yeah, I'd love to hear All it. All right, okay. so because we clearly don't know how to do our own jobs, uh, Chad GBT had to do this for us. Yeah. And here are the top questions to ask you. Mm-hmm. How did you first get interested in acting and television presenting, and what was your journey like to get to where you are today? So that's that's the question that it told you yes. to ask yes. me. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's gonna take up the entire interview. Yeah. <laughs> that is like not just one question. That's right. four I know. questions all. Question. It's, like, yeah. um, <laughs> it's fun. Did you know my big thing is like I feel like we know as little people, like kids, that we know what we wanna do or what we gravitate to. Yeah, Did you feel yeah. like that was something that you were always like presenting, hosting? creating was always like a thing for you as a kid? Well, I always wanted to, so I, I grew up on a sod farm. So I don't know if you know what a sod farm no, is, I don't. but it's like grass. It's a farm of grass. <laughs> nice, so where? There was 400 acres wow. that I grew up in Canada. Oh, so amazing. Niagara Falls, Canada. So I grew up there, so I was in the middle of nowhere and I, you know, I'd watch Star Search and all these things that yeah. you probably don't even know the shows, but I'd be watching them as a little kid and I was like, I want to do that. I want to be on TV. So I knew at a very young age, yeah. I was around 11 when I really realized I wanted to be on TV, but I had no idea how to get there. So that's when I, um, I was a dancer too. I was a ballet dancer and okay. tap and jazz and all that. Yeah, so awesome. I did all that. So I was on stage. And then as my life progressed, I was asked to compete in pageants. Oh, nice. So I competed for Miss Teen Niagara pageant, which I did not win. I had a very embarrassing moment on stage with Miss Teen Niagara. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> we can't get into it. Can we get into it? Well, they asked me what euthanasia was. And I was. They asked you that? On stage what? in front of hundreds of people. You were a teenager? Why would they ask I was, you that? I don't know. And I grew up on a farm. I didn't know what it was. And I said, I think it's like young people in in an Asian country that are Euthanasia. working too young. That makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. I mean, youth and people are taking Euthanasia. advantage of them. That is out. what I said. It's an educated yeah. guess. Why right. would anyone ask anyone that question? Yeah, like, well, I don't even want the real definition. Yeah. Like, Honestly, 15 year olds the, in, in, in today's day, they do know the answer. Oh. I, I just, the internet. It was it, with the internet and everything. There's so much more wise, you know. Right. I'm not yeah, saying yeah. I wasn't wise, but I was just very naive. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I didn't know what it was. Yeah, yeah. And I got laughed at and whatever. So, you know, it's amazing. I still got back up on stage. Good for you. Um, asked to recompete years later for Miss Niagara, and then I won that, and then I won Miss Canada. But very surprising. So I did work hard. So that yes. sometimes when you when you hit the bottom of the barrel, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. you're like that is never gonna happen again. And yeah. So I made sure it never happened again. She awesome. studied before her next pageant. I did. <laughs> yeah. And then was it an easy track after Miss Canada? Like what happened after that? When did you get? When was well, the Well, it was TV never moment? an easy track. Okay, mm -hmm. got it. Never an easy track. Mm -hmm. um, after Miss Canada, then I was still going to university mm -hmm. and uh, I was going through for business administration and theater and then well literally about three months before graduation I won Miss Canada which is the funny thing and then I went to the Miss World pageant wow. and I was in Sun City South Africa wow. and then yeah and then I got into the American Musical Dramatic Academy in New York City mm -hmm. so Amazing. I ended up quitting my reign as Miss Canada about a half an hour early mm -hmm. I'm half an hour a half a year early okay. I quit Okay. My reign as Miss Canada. That's a whole other story. I was like, you said half an hour. I was like, half yeah, an no, hour. Yeah, no, not half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> that was how I was. It's kind of like, it's like, like when you said <laughs> August. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, August. It's, it's not Friday. August. It's Friday. It's Friday. Friday. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Yeah. So, um, and then that's another story. And then I ended up in New York City. And, you know, just uh, studying for musical theater because mm -hmm. I, I wanted to be on Broadway and I wanted to be a soap star. And that's how it sort of started my career. But it was, you know, good 10 years of pounding the pavement and wow. really 
really working hard. Like, wow. yeah, mm -hmm. working five jobs, doing whatever. I worked, not probably not supposed to say this, but I worked under the table for like mm -hmm. three years doing whatever. I did literally whatever I needed to do to, um, to make it. For the naive people out there, all the starving <laughs> artists are working under the table. So just don't, don't indict or all I don't know about that anymore. Don't <laughs> I'm an American indict. citizen now, so I've come yeah, a long yeah, way. You're fine now, you're fine. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, what was the 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 common denominator that kept you going through those ten years? Like, what was that? Just the want and the need to. Yeah, I mean, I never had a plan B. I didn't have plan B, so I was like, mm -hmm. I gotta make it. I gotta do this, mm -hmm. and it was a very, very tumultuous, very. It was a difficult ride. Like those ten years were really hard, and mm -hmm. people ask me, you know, if if you could do it all over again, would you? And I, I don't know if I would. That was my next question. I don't really? know if I would, yeah. And yeah. I have a great life now. So yeah. I, I believe I would end up where I am anyway. Yeah, okay. Okay. yeah, actually, yeah. Do you really believe that though? I don't know, but. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. That's, That's a great answer, answer. yeah. But it was, I mean, maybe I would, me, I don't know. That's my initial reaction. Cause mm -hmm. it was, I'm writing a book now oh, all great. about oh, it. Awesome. About what? Um, about my life, my journey and. Does ChatGPT know this? <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot chat GPT does not know. Thank God, right? <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I mean, there's 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 more. It's just like okay, what was the, next the facts are so off on that. It's crazy. Yeah. Um. So the next one, should we go through the line of? I want to know about the book. I want. There's so much we want to know. But you're 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 hosting your own show right after this, so we're not gonna put you under the ringer too much. Um, That's chat, okay. You can put me GBT, under the ringer. Uh, uh, what inspired you to get involved in home renovation and real estate, and how is that passion? How has that passion influenced you to work, your work in television? What? They can't even, was this, Andy, did you, you edit some of this, right? <laughs> <laughs> what did you edit, Andy? Kind of makes sense. It's pretty, it's Okay, pretty I think neat. I know what it's asking, though. Yeah. How'd um, you so how did I get into home design shows? Yes, I how, auditioned and I got the job. There you go. <laughs> That's it. That is literally. There you go, AI. Yes, because my family, I come from a family, I come from a home building family. So we mm. have a company, my family does, in Canada called Mountain View Homes. Mm. They have been in existence for over 40 years. They're doing amazing. They build like 400 houses a year. My brother owns it now with my cousin. Very successful company, but mm. I left all of that to move to Hollywood. So I was never really... I did not know that I was going to end up paralleling this whole world wow. as a host, That's but I crazy. really am a host more than I am a designer. Got it. Mm -hmm. I can stage homes, but mm -hmm. I'm not really a designer, but I'm a host. And yeah. so with hosting, I fell into the home design world when it first started. It was yeah. the second or third show on TV ever in the home design world, okay. which was really cool. Yeah. And uh, at the time there was only like 20 channels or 25 yeah, channels yeah, yeah, so everybody yeah. watched it that's and awesome. then um yeah that's how i got into it i okay. just fell into it yeah that's awesome that's great you, you fell into hosting too i did i did not i used to do construction i did not fall into that, <laughs> that but was, you used to do construction so I did, like, I did construction for like two or three years yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so you never know how you're gonna you just, you just do your know. life you do your path yeah, and yeah it's interesting where you end up well i was doing construction to pay for the fact that off broadway wasn't paying me Okay, so, I did off-Broadway too. No, they don't pay. They don't pay. <laughs> so, it's a yeah, good experience, that, that was, though. It's a great experience. Yeah. Loved construction, actually. <laughs> I think if I didn't do acting, that would be my favorite job. Really? Yeah, 100%. Why? Because I love using my hands, and you build things. Like, every guy loves to build things. They just don't know it yet. And some of them think they can't. But once you actually... I'll never forget. My first construction, not to take the... No, I love <laughs> stories. This is your interview. I'm, I'm this is your fine interview. with that. <laughs> Uh, short story, I put a window in a wall. It was my first construction job. Mm -hmm. Just it, There was a wall there, then there was a window there in the wall. And I was like, I was like, oh my God, there's a window. There. It just like, I was like, God, you've seen, this is like your seven millionth window you've seen. <laughs> What's so special about this one? I was like, just, there just wasn't there one before. I just, you just assume everything's magic. But no, there was guys in here that built this up. They and, actually built it. And I had that realization and then got obsessed with construction for like three years, yeah. yeah. I think that's cool, I get it. I got obsessed with yeah. like with staging homes too on the show. It was fun. We had a really great time. Do you ever have, oh, no. Do you ever have people come up to you to ask you about like how can I sell this house? All the time. Like yeah. not so in the airport. Now. Mm -hmm. like, oh, in the airport, I would get recognized a lot going mm -hmm. over the Canadian border from the U.S. to Canada. Yeah. <laughs> That's they would just stop. And at the airport, a lot. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's just, I have just quick question. I have this house. Like they do all that all yeah. the time. Oh my god. And you're like, constantly. You're like, uh, my my Venmo is. Um, you want a QR code? Well, <laughs> when the show was really at its height, there was no Venmo, so right, 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 right. <laughs> it was a little while back. But then right. it came back again. And I just finished shooting two more years of, of episodes about a year and a bit ago. That's so. awesome. Yeah, it was fun. That's so fun. What do you love so much about being a host? 
that's different than being a designer? Um, well, being a host is very much different than a designer. Do you know what I mean? You can be a host or a designer and a host. But... I got punished. <laughs> and my, my punishment was to work with an interior designer. Wait, what? Yeah, I tried to drop you out were... of college and my dad was like, fair, you can. But you're going to have to take a job right now that you would have if you drop out right now. I said, okay, fine. I lasted one day. And it was a moving company. As an interior designer, you no, lasted one I day? No, I had to move in an interior designer. And oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, that's, that's and interior rough. designers have like so much stuff. <laughs> and they already know what they want to do with it. So, Yeah. I was like, Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> uh, so, so the hosting over interior designing, I'm with you on that for sure. Uh, but you were saying that you love hosting because... Well, I loved, I mean, really, when I first started out, I wanted to be an actress. And so mm. I was in a horror moon movie with Corey Feldman, and I did a few things. Cool. Yeah, that was a whole other thing. Cool. I got a lot of stories. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. And I, I actually, again, like, I, I just started getting work as a host. I started, mm -hmm. I was on a show called Robotica, and then I was on, um, I started off on DirecTV. I was the That's news awesome. correspondent for DirecTV. That's when, amazing. Yeah. yeah. So that was, like, kind of a big thing, because you're seen by millions of people. Mm -hmm. And then Robotica on TLC was a big show. Show, and then I got to sell this house and then move this house and stuff. So I just, I, I just kept going with what I was doing. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And, um, and I really enjoyed it. What I love most now about it is I love interviewing people. Mm -hmm. I love interviewing people a lot. That's kind of, uh, I don't like doing red carpet interviews a whole yeah. lot, but I like doing the sit down one-on-ones. Mm -hmm. I love the underdog stories. Mm -hmm. I love making, cause like hosting one-on-one, -on -one, right? The person that you're interviewing, you make them the star. They're the right. ones, you don't want to draw too much attention. And I really love giving people the spotlight and yeah. really awesome. digging in and, you know, hearing their story. That means a lot to me. So That's yeah. Awesome. Speaking yeah. of hearing your story, can we get another AI question in? Oh, well, sure. I, I, well, can I ask a question or do we need a chat? Oh, no. Michelle, we, we, AI, well, I, I want to know. Friday, I want to know about Life Masters. And, and, and about that show and, and how you came up with Life Masters. Ah, and, you want to know the truth? I've not yes. told the truth. I, 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 I want to know how this nice. all happened. Can we handle the truth? I, I, I no, don't know. I, I don't think you can handle the truth. No, we can handle, we can handle, we can handle the truth. We can handle, we can so I hid the truth for many years on how I came up with Life Masters, and I'm just starting to talk about it, which is what spurred my book. Okay. So I was, um, I had hit rock bottom for a variety of reasons. I had gone through a period in my life where I was, I had gotten divorced and I mean, that's just like the chain event and I lost all my money and I lost everything I worked for and I just, I really hit rock bottom and yeah. gotten, I got involved with the wrong business partners mm -hmm. and personal partners and mm -hmm. before you know it your life starts spiraling you're just yeah. making bad decisions mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so I didn't know what to do I didn't have any answers and all that and that lasted like way too many years and then my girlfriend called me she says do you want to come over and do you want to do ayahuasca I'm having an ayahuasca ceremony and mm -hmm. I was like I don't know what that is but sure I'll mm -hmm. go mm -hmm. I had no idea what it was you had no idea that's why you did it that's why I did that's it that's why yes. you did it I did not know what it was yeah and I said, okay. So I went over and um, I didn't even know that you weren't really supposed to do it in the U.S., but yeah, I yeah. didn't know what I was getting myself into. Yeah, yeah. And I showed up and uh, this shaman walks in and this music starts and everything's just so moody and cool. And yeah. I did not know. Like, this is where is this? I want to know where this is. This, like, was about, this was, to be honest with you, was like six years ago. Okay. Is, yeah. this, is this like And it was in by... Playa del Rey okay, was like in a... my friend's apartment and she doesn't live there anymore. Okay, good. <laughs> Yeah. Um, was the shaman all like decked out with the robes? She was from Costa Rica and she lived in Costa Rica and oh, she nice. got the medicine herself and she makes it. Like she's like the real deal. Okay, like, wow. Cool. wow. I don't even know what this is. And so I started, you know, music starts and the moodiness starts and the oh, candles man. are lit and the fireplace is lit and uh, I start drinking it. Oh man. Anyway, that is a whole story that I am definitely, I'm writing about that in detail in my book, but it was the weirdest, like, most horrific, oh. most amazing, most beautiful, intense, crazy, wild experience I ever had. My really? journey lasted about 12 hours. Whoa. I didn't know what just happened to me, but really? on the way out of it, um, yeah, it was a lot. Everything that you don't want to happen to you with ayahuasca, it all happened to me. Wow. All of it. Terrifying. And, every, wow. and everything you want to happen with you happened. happened. Oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They call it little death. I died a couple times. A couple yeah, times. That's what my friend said. She goes, she goes, I don't think you can handle it. And I said, why? She's like, because it's called little death. And I was like, what does that mean? No, she it's goes, an she ego goes, you death. die. It's an ego she death. She said, you die multiple times. I said, uh -huh. she goes, and then you throw up. I was like, that sounds terrible. I don't want to have yeah. anything to do with yeah, it. Yeah, no, you don't just throw up. You, it's called purging, and you purge for what seems like hours. Oh, my really? gosh. It's, it's a thing. Now, but it's worth it at the end? Yes. Wow. Apparently... You're, 
You're not purging food. You're purging up like your experiences and like past traumas and all this stuff. I mean, I haven't done it, but I've, I've yeah. asked her a million questions about it. <laughs> she said that the plant talked to her. And oh said yeah, she me needed, too. You're like, what did the plant say to uh, you? All kinds of stuff. <laughs> really? I mean, you have to read the book, okay, but I will tell you, <laughs> it told me to, it said, this is how you're going to get out of your, it told me that I was depressed, which I didn't really want to admit. It said, right. go and research it so you know, but you're going to get out of this. Just know. And what I want you to do is use your God-given talents, and that is to interview people. And I want you to create a podcast. It literally said this. It said, amazing. It said, just create a podcast. I was like, you know what a podcast is? <laughs> 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 to the so plan. <laughs> I said she knows what a podcast. But it was like a feminine energy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just so out of it. Well, she's giving me all this information. And she said, create a podcast, call it the mentored perspective, which was weird. Okay. And then Andy hated the name. So yeah. he's like, no, we gotta change it. So we changed it to Life Masters. Okay. Um, and it said, interview a hundred people that hit rock bottom, and your answers will be in there. Wow. wow. And then write a book. And then get back up on stage and start talking about what you've learned after interviewing 100 wow. people that hit rock bottom. So I'm, I'm on like 86. Wow. People now. That's yeah, amazing. That I've hit rock bottom and I did get out of it um, in three months after that experience. Oh, there's your mug. Oh, yeah, here's my mug. Look. Oh, yeah, Life Masters. I love the logo. It's a good logo. Very, yeah. Yeah. It looks great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so I started it like six years ago, but then I started working again and I got busy and then awesome. I started the book. So I started all the little seedlings to everything and I haven't really marketed Life Masters a lot yet, but um, people seem to love it. Like, And so eventually That's I'll awesome. start marketing and getting it out there, but that is really how it all started. I love that. What a great story. I'm glad you didn't die. I'm glad the ego did. But the ego died a few times. You're, you're still here. You're, you're here because <laughs> I've heard terrifying stories about ayahuasca. They it's all so sound terrifying. It. It's amazing. I, I, yeah. I, 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 get, I get terrifying and amazing in I, the same person I'm every time. I'm terrified of life on, on a daily basis sometimes. I don't know if I could do like the whole like yeah. plant journey. I don't, yeah. I don't you know. You can. I'm with Michelle. I'm, I'm, I, I feel like I would be the one that like runs into something. And but this is the thing. I'm the kind of person, I've done this my whole life. If mm -hmm. I'm afraid of something or I'm, I'm fearful about something, you do that's it? what I do. Really? Mm -hmm. Every time. I can't. Mm -hmm. I can't. Mm -hmm. I've been like that in my in my life, my whole life. If I'm That's afraid of something, I have to do it. That's Good. amazing. Yeah. So growing up on a sod farm, did your family, now that they th see what you're doing and like, you know, your success and past success, like, are they like, wow? Like, no, they're not. No? No. None of that? Really? No. They don't, they're just kind of like, eh. They, they're, my, they're in their own. They, they, my family, they're awesome. Yeah. They're supportive in their way. Got it. Mm -hmm. Got and it. They're, they, but I don't think they really understand how hard it is to make yeah. it in Hollywood mm -hmm. and, and how, you know, I don't think they really understand it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're supportive, yes, but yeah, it's not yeah. like they're like, wow. No, they're not wow Do about their little sister. <laughs> Bro older brothers? Are they older brothers? I have an older brother and I have a younger brother and I have all my cousins and stuff. That's and awesome. They don't really, you know, I, I have to beg them for a, a like on my Instagram. I feel mm -hmm. like brothers don't get it. My brother <laughs> definitely doesn't get it. He's like, uh, the little show that you do, I was like, you mean the one that I helped co-create and produce over 200 episodes? Like, it's not little. Yeah, no, no, like, it's not little. He's it's like, a thing. Like, you got a show, thing. period. Like, like, little thing that you do because he's an attorney. So it's like, he thinks this is all like just yeah. a joke. At least you guys have siblings. What? No, no, no. No, no, no. I tell you. I tell you. I tell you. I tell you. I love the point. The laugh listen, and the point. Listen, listen. That's how all these children feel. Be grateful. Be, Everyone's be, got company. He pulled the gratitude card. You guys are having conversations with people your age? No, I love my brothers yeah, very, very too. much. But they're very successful. So yeah. I think that they look at me like I'm, you know, they're really successful, so I think they look at me like, I don't know what you're doing in Hollywood. Yeah, I don't know what to do right. with you. What do they do? Because my career has been like this. Well, you unless know? you're Denzel and Julia Roberts, then you just have not made it to a lot of people. Well, that's what they think, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, well, so, that's not so true. Fine. You definitely made it, and we're excited for Life Masters and your book. Yeah, no, what? Life that's Masters. it. That's all we get. Really? You guys, check out Life Masters. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I want to see it. 86 people. She's almost at 100. And then we got to see the big reveal, right? What happens after 100? Stay tuned. You gotta stay tuned. More. I'll just keep interviewing. All right. Awesome. <laughs> oh, okay. So this is your camera over here, number three. Plug away. Let people know where they can. Uh, catch you, see you, and connect with you. Okay, check me out on my website, TanyaMemi.com. Go to my Instagram page at TanyaMemiOfficial, and you got to check out Life Masters. It's on every podcast uh, form you can imagine, and uh, it's awesome. It's great. It's about everybody that hit rock, anyone that hit rock bottom and got out of it. That's awesome. Thank you, Tanya. <laughs> that was amazing. That was we need awesome. more time with you, yeah. obviously. Right. That's, that's okay. it. That that's it. That's all we get. That's huh? all we get.